Step into the 1980s and meet the Owens family as they welcome a refined British housekeeper into their lives. In the TV series Mr. Belvedere, the quirky yet endearing character brings humor and a touch of sophistication to the American household. With a mix of funny, shocking, and even sad moments, the show captivates audiences with its unique blend of family dynamics and Mr. Belvedere's distinctive charm. As you dive into the episodes, you'll discover a range of characters, each playing their part in this sitcom. Which role stood out to you as a favorite? Dig deeper, and you might uncover lesser-known facts and anecdotes about the series that add an extra layer of fascination. Did you know there's more to the story than meets the eye? As you continue watching, keep an eye out for those memorable moments that resonate with you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the show? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, which character stole the show for you? Any surprising facts caught your attention? Share your experiences and let's reminisce about the delightful world of Mr. Belvedere. Keep those anecdotes coming, we're all ears. The 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere enjoyed a six-season run and falls into the category of 80s sitcoms that achieved moderate success without reaching significant heights or suffering major flux. The premise involved an English butler residing with an American family, presenting a mix of humor and occasional discomfort. The show's comedic elements were underscored by the titular character, who stood out as a highlight and brought stability to the series. Despite some instances of inappropriate humor, including unsettling jokes involving the daughter and youngest child, the show generally avoided such off-kilter moments. Bob Euchre, known for his baseball play-by-play -play work, played the role of the father with a commendable performance. The father's character contributed positively to the show. However, the mother's character remained unmemorable, and the depiction of the children was inconsistent. The rumor circulating about one of the male children being Marilyn Manson is entirely untrue, adding a layer of misinformation to the show's legacy. While the series had its share of funny moments, it could have potentially thrived longer and garnered more success with improved writing that distinguished between what is genuinely humorous and what is not. In summary, the 80s television show remains a noteworthy part of the era, blending humor with occasional lapses in taste. The series, with its mix of characters and comedic situations, had its strengths and weaknesses, ultimately leaving room for improvement that could have elevated its overall success. In 1985, a TV series introduced a refined British housekeeper to the Owens family. Notably, this wasn't the first attempt to bring Gwen Davenport's 1947 novel to television. Three previous pilots in 1956, 1959, and 1965 had failed to gain network approval. Originally part of ABIC's Friday Night lineup, the show became a fixture in the TGIF programming, offering a mix of humor and family dynamics. However, waning ratings led to a move to Saturdays in 1989. In an unexpected turn, the network shelved the show mid-sixth season in 1989, airing the final two-part series finale in July 1990. The remaining eight episodes saw the light of day in syndication. The enduring charm stemmed from the unique premise, a refined English butler navigating American family life. Throughout its six-season run, the series showcased a blend of humor and occasional discomfort, with the titular character providing stability. Notably, Bob Euchre, famed for baseball commentary, delivered a commendable performance as the father. While the show had its strengths, including Euchre's contribution, it faced inconsistencies in character portrayal, with the mother remaining unmemorable. Rumors about Marilyn Manson's involvement with the series were debunked, adding a layer of misinformation to its legacy. Despite occasional lapses in taste, it left an indelible mark on 80s sitcoms, offering a unique perspective on family life. Mr. Belvedere made television history in 1986 by addressing the sensitive topic of AIDS. In a groundbreaking episode titled Wesley's Friend, a classmate of Wesley's is dismissed from school due to contracting AIDS from a blood transfusion. This narrative paralleled real-life events resembling the case of Ryan White, an Indiana teenager who successfully sued his school for expulsion under similar circumstances. Despite initial hesitation from ABC, actor Christopher Hewitt insisted on airing the episode, marking a significant moment in primetime sitcoms. The series pilot episode, Stranger in the Night, premiered on March 15, 1985. Cinematographer George Spiro Dibby received a primetime Emmy for outstanding lighting direction for his work on this episode, adding a technical accolade to the show's accomplishments. 
Throughout its 117 episodes, all six main characters featured prominently in 112 of them. Notably, the trio of Mr. Belvedere, Marsha Owens, and Wesley Owens appeared in every single episode. This consistent ensemble cast contributed to the show's stability and familiarity, providing viewers with a reliable and cohesive dynamic. In summary, Mr. Belvedere's impact extended beyond its comedic elements. By addressing socially relevant issues and earning technical recognition, the series demonstrated a willingness to push boundaries. The consistent presence of key characters further solidified its place in the realm of 80s sitcoms, offering a unique blend of humor and social commentary. During the production of the series, Bob Euchre seamlessly juggled his role as a full-time Milwaukee Brewers broadcaster with his commitments to filming. Episodes were strategically scheduled to accommodate his broadcasting duties, highlighting his dedication to both professions. Liam Redbone lent his voice to the distinctive theme song, adding a touch of uniqueness to the show's opening credits. His vocals contributed to the overall charm, creating a memorable and catchy introduction for viewers. In an unexpected turn of events, the show found its place in the 1987-1988 TV season lineup after the sudden cancellation of Max Headroom. Not initially part of ABIC's fall schedule, its inclusion brought an element of surprise and allowed Wood it to continue its run despite the unforeseen circumstances. This sitcom, known for its blend of humor and occasional discomfort, took a step beyond traditional family dynamics. Despite facing challenges and uncertainties, it secured its spot in television history with its willingness to address socially relevant issues. The groundbreaking episode titled Wesley's Friend confronted the sensitive topic of AIDS, paralleling real-life events and marking a significant moment in primetime sitcoms. Technical recognition also came in the form of a primetime Emmy for outstanding lighting direction in the pilot episode, Stranger in the Night, which premiered on March 15, 1985. Cinematographer George Spiro Dibby's work added a layer of excellence to the series' accomplishments. The ensemble cast, featuring key characters in the majority of the 117 episodes, provided viewers with a reliable and cohesive dynamic. The trio of the main characters appeared in every single episode, contributing to the show's stability and familiarity. In summary, with its blend of humor, social commentary, and technical accolades, the show carved a unique niche in the world of 80s sitcoms. Its ability to navigate unexpected challenges and its commitment to addressing relevant issues showcase a series that goes beyond conventional laughter, leaving a lasting impact on television history. Stacy Ferguson, recognized today as Fergie, made a notable appearance in season two of the series, portraying Beth, a sophisticated classmate with a crush on Wesley. This addition added a fresh dynamic to the show, showcasing the versatility of the cast. The pilot episode initially depicted George Owens as a construction worker, later evolving into a newspaper sports reporter and eventually a television sportscaster. This transition aligned with Bob Euchre's real-life career, providing a realistic touch to the character. The theme song, according to our new arrival, had an interesting journey. Originally intended for a different series, it found its place in Mr. Belvedere with a re-recorded version by Leon Redbone. Gary Portnoy's unreleased version in 27 added a hidden gem to the show's musical history. The series touched on socially relevant issues, most notably in the groundbreaking episode Wesley's Friend Addressing AIDS. Christopher Hewitt's insistence on airing the episode marked a significant moment in primetime sitcoms, highlighting the show's willingness to push boundaries. Bob Euchre's commitment to both his role as a Milwaukee Brewers broadcaster and actor showcased his dedication. Leon Redbone's unique vocals in the theme song added a distinctive touch to the show's opening credits. The series found an unexpected spot in the 1987-1988 TV season, filling a gap left by the abrupt cancellation of Max Headroom. In navigating unexpected challenges, Mr. Belvedere carved a niche beyond conventional family sitcoms. Its blend of humor, social commentary, and technical accolades left an enduring impact on television history.